Nightfall brought stillness unfamiliar since the savant reduced Quatan to ash. While the loss of so many held so close would never cease to sting, the Twish pushed on, in commendable honour of their motherland, a hard land of roaring rivers and mighty evergreen sweeps. Like between the maple and razor nettle flourished sugar dowry, through the thick they found give for travel and rest. The Twish applied their Rutlander ingenuity to modern amenities, from synthetic coats alchemically stained against elements to the ease of meals to eat and bliss of modern narcotics. As the professionals used to tease his conscript crew during the sunset, those who do not eat, starve. Those who do not drink, choke. Those who do not have joy, dull. So in joy they sharpened their steel, whetted their wills to live. Yet for all his admiration, Boda said the local Avers did not like dogs, and Gregor wasn't sure he could get on with unfriends of the holy Fido. Noshkri dosed himself with one part calf, one part wakey-wakey, to work through the nights, and restore the quenched stock of Schneider brews, birthing bountiful bellyfuls of warm painkillers, through forbidden techniques more at home on a battlefield or wizard's workshop than a brewery. The ingredients he sourced locally, but lacking many of the tools for proper distillation, he made use of Miria to produce vacuum rather than heat, evaporating the alcohol from water by plying the mixture apart at the molecule. Targeted applications of chronomancy turned the weight of years into a flick of the wrist. He could have a spirit pressed, aged to quality, and bottled in the time it took for O to pump a handle through his artificial livers. The demonstration of a singular wielder who could threaten the entire triarchan liqueur or pharmaceutical industry. Such freer markets needn't worry, for aside from the crimes of counterfeiting and bootlegging, withering alone was punishable by the pyre. Beyond the brush line, away from the natural paths cleared by tumbling mountains, O shared cigars of natural grown tobacco, fresher and tastier than Savant's synthetic tobacco alternative. Few of the curious and drunk shared O's fondness. Tender throats and scalded breaths hacked and wheezed. Only Boda could drink like a mosaic, spending her breaks between drills learning the spirits from the brewmaster soothsayer. When she didn't drink, when she didn't tend Ty, whose eyes hadn't left Wraith since the bloody Mesa, Boda joined Wraith and Kamut as they practised fighting in low light. Rather than drink, rather than dwell, rather than knuckle his jaw in worry over notes tucked deep into pockets or warnings tied to pigeons, Gregor took to Wraith's idea to drill. He started with the basics of what Wraith called shield and spear. Bounding, the tactic of moving pairs of battle buddies or army groups, the simple discipline of fire and manoeuvre, could make the difference between the trained and untrained. Consider yourself throwing a jab, Gregor said. He'd have demonstrated, but tonight his aches ran deep. You strike with one arm, keeping the other close to guard. You'd never strike with both, even if you retreat. A punch thrown from guard can buy you time to slip away. Wraith's heartland didn't fit her as well as she insisted. Clumsy as Kamut, she'd never admit it, but so far it proved too heavy for her to charge with. Despite the tone of a primitive lifestyle and diet, she lacked grace and dexterity. She'd rather till the soil, stick on rocks, than back up to unjam the length of the bayonet from the ground. If you fight to protect, you must secure ground before you can give it. If valour demands, you shall give your life for those who can't. Though if defeat is inevitable, do not throw your life away. In a battle such as yours, to live to fight again is the only victory you can expect, Gregor said. I'm not so sure Sir Ben, Schneider said, he too getting drunk on this calm night. The Velcan crooks back home favour human shields. Such iron bands are mere sellswords, mercs and pillagers, Gregor grumbled. The land here is uneven enough. She'll protect against most indirect attacks. No need to cower among the innocent. Boda had more knack for the spearish thrusts of a bayoneted rifle than either Kamut or Wraith. But whereas Wraith committed herself to learning an unwieldy instrument, Boda would throw her natural talent out with the bathwater to drop rifle for axe by the throng when jousting. She'd picked up the hatchet proved a better weapon when within the confines of the tank, but failed to see past her familiarity for the advantage of a mounted bayonet at a distance. Nonetheless, when Wraith jabbed from the belly of the tank, Boda's hatchet won its home-field advantage. 
Hooking Wraith's rifle aside, she threw the taller woman to the dirt and seized the point. Kamut had been so stuck on defense, he'd let Boda uproot Wraith and win, all on without him. Ah, you can sniff me, Boda. Wraith sneered, smacking away a hand offered in aid. To be outdone by Boda, drunk off her rocker, had to have been a blow to her pride. Ah, did. You smell as good as your fight. Boda swapped helping hand for crude gesture, like shit. Again, rotate. Gregor snapped at their attention, leaning over his sword. Kamut crawled into the war machine and in a first, sealed the hatch, whereas the others had simply waited for a fight. When the sealed hatch stalled Boda's advance, Wraith wandered up to join her in plying their strengths, failing to overcome the veritable vault. Shake your ass, ladies. Gonna need a bit more than that to bust that baby open. Schneider shouted on. Must have been another boxing fan. Kamut's quick thinking is a lesson in reality. Without considerable means, a man inside is safer than a man without. That main cannon may be useless if you get beneath it. Even then, the mounted machine gun is deadly. Then still the beast bristles with firing ports. Getting close like this won't actually... Boda bumped Wraith aside with a firm shove. Stumbling up, the sharpness of Mossrock prevailed. The holy stone rang, and Boda cleaved the metal clean in twain. Gregor picked out the moment realization flashed through Wraith. She tossed a bundle of cloth tied to a stick into the belly of the beast, hitting Kamut Square with a dummy masher. Boda boom! Wraith grinned. The mother can mince any fancy meat. And I can cut any sniffer who dares. Boda laughed, thrusting her hatchet skywards. Despite their cheer, Gregor pinched the bridge of his nose to keep himself focused. Avoid such recklessness. Sanga's body, so dense and thick, will limit the mobility and sight of any such assault vehicle. Men on horseback, alpine scouts, and nested marksmen are the foes you'll really need to be aware of. Not to mention the magisters and their many means. From watchers to chimeras, your greatest weapon will be your wit. Only survivors learn to thrive in battle waged at the bleeding edge of technique. The rest is dumb luck. Learn to bide your time. What of the blessings are your mason guard? Wraith asked, stopping at the edge of Gestalt's land. There are no blessings in battle. The harbinger of war is dead, killed by his own designs, Gregor said. Now, again. So you've killed a lot of people, right, Sir Ben? Schneider began, as the three fighters swapped positions and despite the drip of sweat readied to run each other raw. You ever kill anyone? Innocent? Prying, are we? Gregor's wounds wore more than he let on. Seemed he'd grumpiness like Sophie. I'm curious as to the psychology and you are the most available mass killer I know. Schneider laughed over a bottomless bottle. I'd like to ear, Wraith said. Like a pup, she came to heel whenever he let something slip. He doubted her interest in him, but instead in his methodologies. She scraped the wisdom of death from his harrow. He'd rather she stay disinterested, but he supposed this was his doing. Without him, she'd never have seen the Mesa burn nor made it from Quatan at all. He supposed these were the survivors whose wit would serve them well. Maybe they deserved more credit. Then listen close, I'm afraid it's easier than you think. Power is fun to wield, if you must know. I've killed plenty of Triarchs and Rook, and at the time I enjoyed it very much. Were you there when they offed the Castellan of Mir? Schneider asked and drank deep before adding, And her kids? No surprise to Gregor that Schneider, a Triarch, would be most interested in his partisan history. He supposed if he'd met a Noran, they'd have asked about Yash a Rukrat about Beshka, a Seren about Ranre, an Avain about Stasenbul. No, but I knew plenty who were. Were you... Schneider let the question hang. A part of it? Yes, the Magadian Federal Guard deployed out of Otsted, many Lamplight Ilesh. Gregor cast his sympathies past to the lizards skulking about, mixing rum he didn't drink. About a third of the force, in fact, who I couldn't turn... I had the men line their own against the wall. Some ran, most fought back. None survived. Are you shoddy serious? The influence of his own supply let Schneider's genuine shock simmer, while Wraith listened keen. It is the Iron Way, you just said so yourself. The Iron Bands are fragments of the last legion that I knew. Never killed a Rager, though, O added from around laughter. Never will, Gregor reassured himself. And you still comfy with this fella, Noshkri? Schneider asked. Sounds like he wears scales like a coat and moss rind like a scarf. I am comfy with nothing but our contracts, Schneider. 
the lizard said, deep in his mixtures. But sounds to me like he's killed more barbaric apes than Ilesh. Men make the worst monsters, Gregor said. Speaking of monsters, Schneider said, leaning in as he smelled the blood in the water, reaching for the true source of his curiosity. What of this message? Schneider asked. If I'm risking my birds and my photographer so you can divine dangerous knowledge, it's only fair I get a peek. Caution would only beg more curious ears. What whispers would be had of the Eshi's forbidden topic, so we'd let truth spice ambiguity. Adversary. So Sophie read. The foe wiped out on this era's eve by the Bray and thirty-three, the instrument of the Witherer's fall and the agents against preservation. If what Wraith encountered is one, their uttered name will be the least of our problems. Is there... doubt? Schneider asked, gesturing as if to summon the concept near to ask Lady Doubt herself. Always, Gregor began. If true, then the message is divine, inspired by Gestalt unto Wraith. Yet, for the same reason I'd trust her, I trust any who'd have been there. Withers too whistle in these welds. I suspect savant operators are unaware of the adversary's very existence, but an endless any more than nine centuries would have borne witness. If this speaker thinks I am an artisan, then there would be no more devious crumb to dangle before me. The magic of the endless comes from the witherer's way, gleamed from the adversary itself. The endless may be godless, but sympathizers scheme together. Just as Miria was a gift to endless, it was in turn their gift to man. So... This elf is teasing you with children's stories, Schneider thumbed a curled moustache. Noshkri, Sophie, you be the experts. Without the veracity to speak, and with her brands giving trouble to her writing, Sophie simply shrugged. All news to me. Sir Ben, you say you'd trust the ones who were there? Who might this be? Gestalt predates our time just as the endless. There has been nearly ten centuries for the artisanry to use the feathers to suppress the truth in the realms of men and to cull truth-tellers among the beasts. Little of what occurred was ever really known to begin. I've never been to the commune of Casima or the Cravelien in Trumoas, and the libraries of my study never recovered from the revolution. So much precious knowledge was lost in the eighth century. I know little of the true nature of what may lurk. Wraith and the Aglers both agree on the creature's insectoid body. Never have I encountered such a description though it is evidently a powerful wielder, as one would expect. Though, this could be yet another sylvan misdirection. Or, he worried, it could be the truth. So it's got no thing to do with the Dark Ones? Wraith asked. As he suspected, the titillation drew forlorn gazes from a small fire, dug into ground to mask its light and conceal their presence. Too much or too little revealed of the scraps he did know could seduce the deluded and the naive. He found little but curiosity, but in Noshkri perhaps there was lust for knowledge. In Wraith, fury, in Thai, revenge, and Schneider, greed. Gifts were the witherer's way, taught to he by an even crueler teacher. If his doubt should be quenched, then he'd know for certain he couldn't stand between the twish and the savant, for there were greater dichotomies at work here. Little evidence suggests so. If it did... It could be their masters may seek this ancient power. They are arrogant enough to ignore that ultimately it would destroy them in the pursuit of its own ends. Regardless, I have sent out messages. One on Schneider's courier pigeon. Should evil lurk here, I will uncover it and cut it to the ground. Is this why you came? Schneider asked. This man had Wraith's own curiosity, yet he seemed disinterested in war stories and the tricks of violence. Gregor surmised he must be interested in his artisan connection. In the feather, perhaps. Dark things tend to lurk in magical places, Gregor said. But no, it is worse than I feared. What even could you fear? Wraith asked. I do not know. A catastrophe. Gregor sighed. I emphasize the danger you're all in. I cannot guarantee safety. The border is there, O Schneider, if you take these people with you. They can go right now. I said as much already, lad. I got dreams... Dreams full of cows, pigs, land, and women with tits as big as buttermelons and cunts that'll rile me like coffee. What have you, Schneider? If we're going to stand side by side, you must be honest with me. And I've heard enough of greed. You're quite right, Ben. Quite right, Schneider nodded, knuckling froth from dry lips. I could tell you I'm in it for the myth right like, oh, 
and that'd be true. But I've more facets than our stumpy chum. Seeing you work with Arik has inspired me. Why, I've even taken to wearing my crux again.